Just ahead of his semi-finals this weekend, we have Faker up against the world's number one Yasuo, P. Zhang, in Korean solo queue. Faker, maybe spicing up the Akali pick. We've seen players like Chovy uh, make it work. There's definitely a couple of mechanics where you can run into things like the Oriana and the Syndra, these mages, and take over the game. Faker's Akali, do I want to see it? Not really, no. I want to see him on Oriana again. I want to see him on Azir again. Um, and that's about it. Um... Zhang at the moment, he has a challenger account, another grandmaster account. He's having a couple of really wacky builds going on at the moment, but I think the best one is still the Kraken Gale Force setup that he's been doing. Spectator mode, by the way, has like a lot of visual errors. You can see like these 12s and stuff. Just ignore that. Akali versus Yasuo. I couldn't ask for a better matchup. It should be explosive as hell. Um, Akali should win it. The only deciding factor in these type of games is the jungle and the support. The mid lane, if there's a solo kill, I'll be extremely surprised. These two... Oh, that's a beautiful trade by Faker. And I do think it's much more likely that Knight pulls out Akali up against Faker this weekend. Knight, some of the best Akali, some of the best Silas gameplay you'll ever see. And then Faker, some of his mages are just simply... I'm not going to call them non-mechanical, but I, I definitely think Knight has the mechanics... Edge over Faker, and then Faker just has the brain gap. You saw what the brain cap brain gap did against Scout on the weekend. Absolutely annihilated. Completely stomped. Faker was the only reason T1 won on the weekend. Oh Drew, what about oh, what no, everything he did facilitated the jungle up, the sup, the bot, the top. Faker carried it. Fact. If you dispute me, I will fight you in game. Faker has the fleet and the Dorans. Pizang with the lethal tempo. And I'm wandering into a double AP mid jung that Pizang's going to try and itemize a little bit of magic this early. You could do it and then end up going for things like the wit's end as Faker going in for a really aggressive trade here. Has to wait the passive out. E lands, goes in, Q. Pizang moving through the wave. Elise trying to get on top of it. Q lands. Where's Belveth? Where's Belveth? Don't get baited. Where's Belveth? P Zhang looking for the 1v2. Can he get it? He can't. First blood goes over. Ooh, Faker E lands. Has to flash. Belveth goes in. Faker with the one for one. And what an explosive. This is exactly the start I was hoping for in this game. Faker gets the kill. P Zhang dead. Gonna TP back into the mid lane. And I am predicting on the weekend. And yes, I did predict, predict the T1 3-0. I am predicting JDG win 3-1. Now, don't get it twisted. I simply look at the mid laners and the better mid laner, I give the I give the team the win to. And that's extreme. Oh my god. As Faker goes so aggressive here. P-Zang trying to make a win. Always Jung 2v2. Beautiful dodge. Elise. They gotta know Elise is there. Cocoon lands. Careful. The Yasuo passive is coming back up. Gets proc. Mid lane is 2v2. Every single time, I need to tell you guys. The only deciding factor in the mid lane, especially when I lost to Chovy and Caps, as Faker gets baited in there, goes into the... Uh, now, gentlemen, that is P. Zhang baiting Faker. Forces the flash out of the lease. Yikes. That's not what I want to see, Faker. If you do this against Knight, he is going to punish you. We'll head back into the mid lane. Slight lead for the Belvet. <coughs> the Belvet there. Actually massive lead getting those two kills early. Bounty on her head. At least with the PTA. If she falls behind, don't get it twisted. The game probably is done. Baker moves in. It's a big wave. It's a big wave. Can we... Nado hits. Can we land the E? Can we land the E? Can we land the E? E, lands, goes in, Q, auto, gets the solo bolo. But now the wave's in a little bit of an awkward position. Dodges. Make you gonna ego and move in. This might be a mistake. Let's see, moves in. Has the Elise and the Renata hovering. Renata, one of the best picks in the support position at the moment. And we are gonna get a little bit of a fight. Ego's wide. You need to be careful about blowing these E's. My lord. 
How far? We, neither mid laner is level 6 or even close to it. I don't think Faker hits it off this wave. They've missed a bit of CS, these two. He'll hit it off this wave. Level 6 all in is going to be interesting. He has no vision. And I will try and take this review a little bit seriously. My last review with Baus. You guys know, some reviews I... Ooh, he's saying hit 6. Some reviews I go... Ri if this Q lands, he's dead. Oh my lord, that's a good solo kill. Faker disrespects, gets hit by the NATO. Pizang, 45 CS to 20. Faker gets that entire wave shoved in. Some reviews, I have a little bit of fun with it. The Baus reviews, we're joking around. The Faker Pizang reviews, I take seriously. You know, I try and at least give you a little bit of my challenger career. Yes, I did hit challenger in Korea this year. Knowledge into the game. Now, as we're 30 CS down into Berserker Greaves Yasuo. Is there a way into the game for your Akali? Yes. Is it going to be hard? Yes. It's going to be damn near impossible. But here's the thing. And even though I'm backing JDG to win this weekend, my heart tells me Faker wins. You're like, you don't... Oh my god. As Bell... Nico, sorry. As Faker goes in, he's two levels down. Dude, as level six, he might even go for this. Let's see. Nado does land. He's low here. He's low here. He's low here. Nico. Nico. Faker hits the ult. Limit testing. Okay, I'll allow it. Uh, <laughs> he saw a play. Now, does that play, if it went wrong, make him 20 CS to 60 in the mid lane? Yes, it does. Does that mean he probably shouldn't have went for it? Yes, it does. Uh, Faker, just having a little bit of fun here. I, As I said, I have a feeling in my heart that he wins this weekend. I also have a feeling in my head that JDG are the better team and LNG completely shat the bed when they verse them and that we're getting... That, that T1 is simply getting overhyped. That's what my head and my high-level tier analysis say and that jdg you're gonna completely stomp but there's just something deep down inside of me no not that a feeling a feeling that faker just has that clutch factor he has that you dodge the q w comes out dodge another q but the q was blocked by the wind wall e blocked as well and ah uh, faker doesn't have alt and elise is gonna go down to pizang uh Oh my god, P. Zhang is clean, dude. I played a Yasuo again the other day, top lane, and I, I, I had P. Zhang in my head, and I played very good in the early game, and then I got picked once, and then the game was over. I don't know how he does it, as Faker just gets taken out, actually solo, P. Zhang with the double. We're gonna need a damn miracle to come back from this. Yeah, I played a game, and in my head, I was P. Zhang. I played very good early. And then, I don't know how these players do it, late game, into any type of CC... I just get CC'd in a fight once and I'm dead. Doesn't matter how far ahead I am. I don't know how they do it. Are they better than me? No, Drew, they're not better. That's what I'm saying, dude. Are they luckier than me? Probably. But also probably better. It's Faker. That was a good all-in. He is two levels down though and no damage. Belveth hovering. No flash now as well. Now... Is the 50 CS deficit worrying me? No, it's terrifying me. He needs to eat a bounty and he eat, he needs to eat it right now. As by the way, thank you for the support on my new channel. Um, the Indoor Boy on YouTube. Go and check it out. Got a couple of things planned for the future, so you're going to stop by. Channel link's in the description down below. Now we have Kraken, and when Yasuo gets Kraken, and you don't have a Mythic, it means sit behind tower and wait. If you look for this 2v... If you look for this 2v1, or 2v2, you deserve to be banned. Thank you very much. Ah, uh, Riot. There we go, he's listening to my advice, Faker. Thank you very much. Now, this is where we need the Yasuo to be mind-controlled. 
Somebody mind control this Yasuo into a death. The only person with mind control big enough is Faker. He can't do it. He's terrified of the Belveth dive as well. Pizang has all. If he lands Nado. Oh my lord. 60 CS lead at 11 minutes. 60 CS lead at 11 minutes. Enemy AD carry is steamrolling. The only hope this game is that Cassante. Now don't get it twisted. Sometimes putting all your hopes into a Cassante can work out. TP's in. We still don't have Mythic. Elise still hard camping for... Faker always, like... It's, it really does, it probably does suck for him playing solo queue because his games are just so heavily mid lane played because of how popular he is and people are just wanting to kill him and play around him. So his junglers always try to gank him. Enemy jungler always tries to kill him. Ugh, it, it, it really is a blessing and a curse. Trust me, I know. I play I play the game as well. I'm not, not all. Uh, one, two, three. Play safe mid. Play safe mid, E gets cancelled, and we are popped. I have never seen Faker more behind at 12 minutes, ever. It's going to have to be an anime comeback from here. Can Faker do it on Akali? Yes, he can. Okay. Two, oh my god. If this is an FF, my day is ruined. Drew, is there sometimes games where you pick a review and then the game's trash and you never upload it? Yes. Happened to me a few times in my life as Faker goes in. Q. Has to land it. Has to land it. Shut down one. Now if he can get two. We're off to the races. Wait, 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 wait. Elise gets it. I really wanted that. Races. Melbourne Cup. Did I win? No. The Melbourne Cup went up my the pick that I picked at Melbourne Cup came second. Terrible day at the racetrack. I actually went to the racetrack. It was pretty fun. Pretty fun. A lot of energy. A lot of degeneracy as well. Which sometimes you just get carried away with. I kinda liked it. Thinking about buying a racehorse myself. Make it have a little silly little League of Legends name. How much does a racehorse cost? Can we buy a racehorse, call it Hecarim, and just stack it and make it fed as possible to see if it can win a race? Would be funny, but also would be costly. This fake, uh, I don't know why, he puts his ward deep. Is he trying He actually generally doesn't want to move. There's 6k gold behind. Okay, as we base. Don't base, sorry. We just sit still in base. Oh my lord. Is it going to be the Shride Breaker Yasuo build? We saw this. We, we saw a Shride Breaker type build come out of Chovy at Worlds, didn't we? And I didn't really like it on Yone. And I don't know if, I don't know if I'm going to like it on Yasuo here. Okay. He's saying not worth a ban anymore. I think Faker has flash. He gets knocked up. TP coming in. And... Oh, I think Cassante eats it. Come on. Faker gets it. Bang. Let me run some numbers here. 7k gold behind. Cassante is 10 CS per minute and unkillable to Yasuo and to Kalista. And to Belvet. The only person doing damage is the O2 Gwen. There is hope. Young Padawan. There is hope. Where there's a there's a will, there's a way. I don't know who said that, but a pretty good saying. As we do hit the stride breaker on the Yasuo. That's what I was saying. He has a bunch of wacky little builds going on, P Zang. I think he's generally just having a little bit of funsies. Going for a little bit of content. As Faker Protobelt doesn't do anything. Ah, uh, Q. Get out. Get the auto. Get the Q. 
R2 should go straight through, and we pick up a solo. Okay, I see you. Couple more of them would be great. Looking at the bot lane of the map, we have everybody killing Renata. That's P Zhang with his eighth. And I'm praying there's no FF vote. I don't know the result, but I know the game goes long. That's all I know. I'm praying the game goes long and they come back or make it make it close. Yeah, there's been a few times where I'll pick games and I don't know the results and they just turn out to be complete sh like crap games and I just waste my time. And then other times I, I get these VODs and I get sent them and, I'll, and they just tell me it's a good game and I, and I get a fresh watch. It usually just gives a better reaction. It's always a better, it's always, it's always better content when I'm watching it fresh. And also I'm actually entertained also. I'm not bored out of my mind if I've pre-watched games. Because believe it or not, I actually still enjoy League. I don't, like, yes, it's my job. But also, I, I, I like, I'd, I would watch this happily on my free time without you guys. But it actually makes it more interesting to me when I can just talk. Because I don't want to talk in a room alone. It's fake. It just sits, watches, like I seem to do sometimes. 70 CS behind. Uh, and we're going to have to go and match P. Zhang in the side lane. This Yasuo... Shutdown shut actually goes, oh my god. Kasante just ate the 1,000 gold bounty. And P-Zang gonna try and look for the 1v1. Can we bait it? Baker, he doesn't land. He's gonna try and bait. Bait, bait, bait. P-Zang has to know this is bait, right? Oh my god. Faker, stride breaker. Everything hits. Oh my god. Protobelt's away. P-Zang goes in. Faker, still? Hmm. Was that worth? Faker had to blow flash. P-Zang had to blow flash. It probably was. We find the Gwyneth. I think what this red team team needs to do is just let Cassante lead the way and just sit on him. Sit on Cassante, baby. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot more. Sh did Stride Breaker get buffed as of late? I can't. I don't know. It seems like it's getting built a lot more, a lot more often. As Samira. We don't like to talk about Samira here. 081. Enemy Nico 2011. Bit of a bot lane gap. Is it a mid lane gap? Uh... <sighs> yes, kind of. That early game was incredible by P Zhang. I'd probably be flaming Faker myself. I don't flame though. I'm not a flamer. I was born a flamer. But now I suppress it. Once a flamer, always a flamer, but you just learn to suppress your emotions better. Read some books from Marcus Aurelius, some stoicism. Faker moves in. Faker picks up the Belveth. No bounty, but picks up the Gwen. Two kills to his name here. 773. And one by one, with this Cassante standing at the front, they are making a little bit of a comeback. Only one dragon down at 19 minutes as well is pretty solid as we bait in. This Nico is worth a bounty, remember? Fake up, looking for it. Nico goes in, Nico goes down. First kill over to the Samir is a bounty. P Zhang looking for the 1v5. He gets one. Can he get any more? The answer is yes. Faker is gonna head back to the base. He's probably sitting. He has eight dark seal stacks. He needs time to farm. You oh. You can't be 80 CS at 20 minutes in a challenger game. I'm sorry. If I did this, my Twitch chat, I would be banned. Like, I would be getting flamed to heck. And I still get flamed to heck. Because I do do this. But if this was me, I would be getting flamed. Which I do. It's fake up. Two levels down, but he's still testing out this 1v1. I saw him when he was playing, like, on the weekend. He was playing so aggressive. Like, he was stat checking and mechanics checking every single goddamn play. He was just moving in, moving out, outplaying everywhere he went. I said, I said, I had never seen Faker in this good of a form, like, on the weekend when he showed up. Like, probably since, like, 2000 and maybe 15, dude. 2016. Like, that's peak Faker form. And his form lines into that game was crazy. Nobody, I, I, nobody, especially me, the biggest faker meat rider of the world. Like, I just did not believe that that was him playing. Check him PC, all I said. 
It's like Faker. It, it, it's like Tiger Woods coming back and winning the 2021 Masters, you know? You just you just can't ever write Faker, Tiger Woods, or Mid Beast out. You just can't write them out. They got that factor, that clutch factor sometimes. Still 8,000 gold behind. Looking like it's going to be a pretty interesting mid game, though. If they didn't have this Cassante, they'd be pooped. Fact. Fake up. TP available. Shut down. Comes in. Shut down. Do you see this? Cassante can't die. Moves in. Cassante. Cast the curse at him. Do you see the RE combo? One, two, three, four, five for one. The cast Kisante can die, but if he dies, they get an ace. That's if they get a Baron power play, not sponsored by Red Bull, by the way. If they get this power power play, Red Bull, not sponsored. This is not gonna tie things up, but it's gonna make it pretty damn close because they should get some objective bounties. 10 stacks in the Dark Seal. We're still 70 CS behind. Correct. But I reckon once he gets his Hourglass and maybe a Medjai's, he's going to be able to start cooking a 1v1. Actually, is that a Maw that I see that P Zhang's bought? The Hourglass should be purchased here by Faker. Makes his way also towards potentially Death Cap or the Shadow Flame. And yes, it, it, it is two mores for Belveth and for Yasuo. Makes me a little bit sick, which means I think... And don't... Probably... I, I, I genuinely think that needlessly large rod should be towards a Void Staff, and I think his itemization is wrong. Thoughts? Maybe he wants a Shadow Flame because of how much shielding is on their team. Shield Bow plus Yasuo, but... Mathematically speaking, I, I believe the Void is just simple better damage numbers, stat-wise. Especially if the Calista starts going MR. This game kind of does, like, it. you can see the scores. Grandmaster, Grandmaster, Master, Grandmaster, Grandmaster. These are high-low games, but it, it, this one feels a little bit... Fiestri and low elo. It's weird in Korea how some games just feel like this. It feels genuine low elo game. When it's high elo. But the players just decide to run around and just bang heads. Test mechanics. Not able to find anybody in the bush. TP not available either. Careful. They need to be so careful mid for the engage. I want to see the 1v1. P Zhang against Faker. Who wins? Gonna come down to outplays. The Yasuo should win now because of the itemization. I don't think. Don't base yet. TP is up in 70. And they just want to fight mid. Faker wants to shove and his team not to fight, but. Oh my god. Top side. Somebody needs to get top side wave. I think they're gonna try and trade. I can't watch. Now, this play right here, guys, this is actually so crucial. How many of you, me included, would just run mid here and fight? Put your hands up. Me. I would do it. Drew, I can never get CS. I can never find towers. I can never do this. How many of you would simply just run mid for the ARAM and fight? Almost everybody here would. Baker says, I, I don't like the fight. His whole team dies. His whole team dies. But he gets bot lane tower, he gets the CS, and he might even get two towers here, okay? And he stays. Do you see, do you see? Okay, this is a prime example, okay? By the time he got to the fight, it was probably done in a bad fight. Instead, he collects like a thousand plus gold in the side lane. And then next fight is the fight he makes a difference. Yes, obviously, if his team didn't fight, it was like the perfect scenario. But that's what you're going for. You're looking for League of Legends to be played perfectly, right? Shadow Flame completed for the shields. Going mid is a coin flip play. Maybe they win the game there, but also it's just not the right play. You hope that 
You pin your team off, you're on the side lane, and that's all you can do. And then you make the right play in your head. As we're going to get our Baron, a dragon fight, sorry. Third dragon at the end. Samira has three items somehow. I bet she ate a couple of bounties. Asante TP is in. Faker is spotted, looking for a unique angle. I don't think he's going to try and use this yet. He's just going to wait. As a pink ward, and just going to try and pressure this angle. He goes in now, finally. Ah, use W. Goes in. Protobelt. E. Lance. Takes down the Gwen. Ah, Q. Takes down the Nico, I believe. Can we get in on the Belveth? Belveth has Hex Shrinker. More proc. Goes down as an ace. That is a 5 4 1. Every single time this Cassante dies, they put so much investment into it. They do get the Dragon, though, which makes me nervous, but somehow we've been able to make a comeback here. How many of us would have given up on this game early? I would have, probably. It looked doomed. But a couple of a couple of really good fights and one champion, thanks to the right games, that is unkillable, stupid, broken, Sante, and you're back, just like that. Now, if you had a vein top that was behind, if, you had, if there was a different thing where your comp wasn't good, yes, probably give up. Sometimes it's good to give up in life. Especially League of Legends. But most of the time, it's not. Fight it out to the last breath. While we play games. If you queue up playing a game, I've said this a million times, dude. If you queue up praying that you get behind, and the enemy team gets so far ahead, they take the foot off the pedal, they throw the game, and you win, and you sit there knowing how angry the enemy team is because you've been there and you know how it feels, that's the best feeling in the game. A 10-0 stomp early is not a good feeling in the game. So why chase bad feelings? Chase that come from behind. I'm not saying int early for the feeling, but I'm saying if you do get behind, be grateful that you have the chance to ruin somebody's day, slash week, slash month, slash life. As he does makes his way slowly towards Void. We need level 16 here. Enemy Callista only has the shield bow. I think Faker can just run through her. The Yasuo has stopwatch, so it's probably not that. So does the Belveth. Perma check items. Before every single fight to check stopwatches, by the way. A lot of you guys are never doing this. I've seen... when I, If I ever do, like, watch watch uh, low elo players, they always get surprised if somebody has a stopwatch um, or, like, some type of active in the invent. They, like, they get outplayed by it, then they look and they go, oh, shit, he had a stopwatch. Dude, perma, term, perma tabbing when you're coming into these type of fights and just look at the items, okay? Nico finds the pick onto the least, but they're not able to egg, make any kill. Faker in the back of the fire. He's kind of zoning all three of them here into the stopwatch. And nobody, nobody dies. Crazy. They're going to try and set up for the Baron here. Yasuo has the TP, but... And this is going to be a brawl. TP comes in. Faker trying to zone. Gets vision of where the Belveth is. P-Zang moving in. E lands. One shots the Gwen. This Gwen has been terrible all game. Show me that Baron health bar. Oh my lord, careful. E lands. Flashes. Blast plants. Jesus Christ. They need to try and watch the base. P Zang has TP. And he goes down though to the Samira. Faker would teleport back in. Gets the void stuff. 3k gold lead. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. To those that were sleeping potentially that I just woke up. Elixir? Huh? What's the point of basing there? Didn't get an elixir, didn't get anything. As we have TP. Both mids are exactly the same here. Pretty much build. Grab that blue. We don't have flash. I definitely think... 
I thought with this type of lead and a Nico for engage with all the knockups, I thought P Zhang was going to 1v9 this game. I've seen him get leads and he's struggling to 1v9 games lately. Maybe it's because of how much CC's in the game. Maybe something's changed. Like, obviously, you're into a Cassante who will never die. There's so many Renekton's right now. Like, maybe it's just that. As we... Set up for a fight. Faker has TP here. Somebody has to answer the Gwen. That's going to be him. It's the Elixir. Elixir. 500 gold. 1200 gold value as he goes in. Pretty much got a one-shot this chick. Gets her out of there. See you later. Alligator. Now still has the TP if he wants to try and regroup. That's why he went back. Cassante stays, protects the team. Faker makes his way back. Deals with the Gwen. And that will be Sol denied. As Faker right now should be watching the fight. And he'll TP in. TP in. Samira just wipes three, four... And Samira just runs the game, I suppose. Baker still has TP, and they're going to be able to end. That's it, gentlemen. They easily end with this. Thank you so much for watching. What a game. Thank God it came back. I knew it was a 30-minute game. I was praying they made a comeback to win, and they do. Fake it this weekend. Make sure to check it out. I'm supporting him. I think he's going to lose, but it's like a thing where if, if Knight and JDG win, I can be like, I told you so. But if Faker wins, I still feel good. It's like it's still a feel good feeling. Without further ado, thank you so much for watching today, gents, and I'll see you on my next video. Good night.